This episode brought to you by Shime, the award-winning app and debit card that can save you money today. Also brought to you by Bespoke Post. Get your box of awesome today. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it, so you don't have to. With the Renaissance reaching an emotional triumph, resulting in Brendan Fraser winning Best Actor, I think it only makes sense to look at his most challenging, complex, and even daring performance worthy of an Oscar winner. I'm of course referring to Punchline. <laughs> In 1999, Dudley Do-Right was trying to ride off the success of the surprise hit, George of the Jungle. They even mentioned George of the Jungle three times in the trailer. From the creator of George of the Jungle, and the star of George of the Jungle, and the acclaimed director who saw George of the Jungle. Yeah, okay, that's pretty funny. Catching in on another Jay Ward animated series, Dudley Do-Right didn't exactly win over audiences like George did. It bombed pretty hard, and the few people that did see it usually wish they didn't. I remember seeing the cartoon satirizing old silent melodramas and liking it okay, but I get the feeling it worked better as a series of shorts rather than an hour and a half narrative. I've gotten requests to look this over for some time now, and seeing how Fraser Street Cred could easily buy and sell me to. Well, myself, though I don't think I'm worth the money. I don't think he mind the revisit. So let's take a closer look. Let's see how Do Right does wrong. Yeah, I know. This is Dudley Do Right. Ha! Ah, if you're so like George of the Jungle, how come Disney didn't buy you yet? Yeah, screw it, I'm still gonna rank this in the shitty live action remake tier list. So the film actually opens with a fractured fairy tale short, which feels appropriate. My only fear is without it, the film is only an hour 15 long, which makes me think they added this just to reach the bare minimum running time for a movie. And as you've probably noticed in the past, that usually means quality. Create your Xbox, my car. There was no one so clever at driving a bargain. Well, that joke would have worked better if Fox actually made it. Whoever opens that box is gonna die! How'd you know that? Well, I was like uh, listening to the first part of the story, you know? It has the same feel as the Jay Ward cartoon, and honestly, might give the impression the film is gonna be okay. It has a similar style, similar humor, even some of the same voice actors. My favorite is the fox tricking a guy who's so stupid he only came in second for Village Idiot. So he couldn't even do that right. The legend said that whoever opened the box would die. But it didn't say when. Oh, I'm assuming right after this short is over. On that note, the movie does begin right after with honestly a pretty funny idea. We see the main characters as children wearing similar clothes and having the same one-note personalities at their future melodrama parodies. I'm gonna be the bad guy. I get to do stuff like this and this. <gasps> That's right, all the world will soon know the name Snidely Weinstein Whiplash! I kind of love the faces of indifference Nell gives being kissed by either the villain or the hero. Why Dudley? I'm just thinking I have better chemistry with the horse. <laughs> Dudley, of course, says he wants to be a Royal Canadian Yaxman. I mean Mountie, sorry, wrong cartoon. And as the credits roll, he grows up into Brendan Fraser. He tries to stop bad guys from doing bad guy things like Snidely Whiplash, played now by Alfred Molina. Help you? Uh, could you wait till everyone's in, please? I mean, okay, this isn't too bad. Yeah, that's a cute visual joke. I wonder what point things start going downhill. <laughs> ah, what a nicely written welcome, Matt. Right. Snidely hides the gold in the mine, which seems a little backwards. But Dudley goes to confront him. Why do you have a shotgun? I was hunting for vampires. Vampires? I'm afraid so. Vampires. So the casting honestly seems pretty spot on. Everyone seems to match their roles and clearly puts their all into it. But often the timing seems really off. Really are vampires around here? Sadly. I have to go. Oh, I thought you might. Um, so long. Ciao. That was a fine rehearsal, but could we try one with jokes? The plan is a little confusing, but Snidely literally railroads the bank president into signing over all the mortgages to him. Pay up the mortgage now, or this quaint little fixer-upper is mine. I don't get this guy. He has gold and a bank president who will sign anything. Shouldn't he have all he wants by now? He takes over the town, making everyone's life a living hell, but Dudley seems to still be on that unfunny vampire joke to move forward. No, really, they reuse this joke a lot. I thought that this was about the vampires. <laughs> 
am a vampire! Ah! Freaking Lost Boys mentioned vampires less than this! It's me, Dudley! It's Nell Fenwick! He's visited by Nell, played now by Sarah Jessica Parker. Another problem is while a lot of the actors do a good job channeling their cartoon characters' voices and personalities, Frasier just plays Dudley like a slightly more coherent George. Listen to them all back to back. Don't keep looking out the window in the direction of the sawmill. It can't help. I went out and saw the world just like I planned. Oh, and then I oh. served as U.S. ambassador to Guam. What's keeping that dole do right? He should have been here long ago. How can I do this to you, madam? I was born to do it. Now get out and take your munchkins with you. That's right, sir. Square shooting Dudley Do-Right at your service. Square and true, eyes of blue. Oh, I got you. You want one of those fuzzy plaid blankets that they sell down at the Mountie store? Beach house with a hot tub? That really doesn't sound like Dudley, does it? I mean, okay, he doesn't have to do this voice the whole time or anything, but it doesn't feel like the same type of bumbling doof is from the source material. Granted, there are still a few jokes he can pull off. Is something burning? Oh yeah, right, like you think I'm stupid enough to fall for that old trick. People give him credit for wearing a fat suit, but I give him much more credit for wearing a hat that's on fire. Now, if he did both, he'd win two Oscars. Nell shows it's really her by singing a love song they both remember. When I'm calling you This movie's ready to evolve from bad running vampire jokes to bad running floorboard jokes. <laughs> Even Sarah Jessica Park is like, we got ten more minutes of this, don't we? Don't worry, they mix it up with other excuses to play the best of Michael Winslow. <laughs> you know, cartoon sound effects can enhance your slapstick, but not when you solely rely on them. Dudley and Nell make their way to a Canadian corn festival, and boy oh boy does this look like it's gonna age well. That tribe of South Brooklyn Indians, the Canarsie Kumquats. Me do well. Good for you, sugar. Well, come on, let's go see the show. <clears throat> okay, I see what you're trying to do. Trying to confuse me if this is funny or racist. I'll settle for both. This river damn stuff is really hot lately. And will be for, huh, look at that, right up to this moment. I'm a standing room only, don't you? Oh, of course I do. How are you standing room only? How's your father refuses to have naming credits? Wow. Bravo. Oh, bravo. I wasn't this uncomfortable since I made the Sex in the City sequel. And don't worry, everybody. There's more vampire jokes. Nightly Whiplash. He's hunting vampires with gold bullets, which scares the heck out of me. Vampires are gold bullets. Vampires. Did vampires fund this movie? Even Anne Rice would be like, dude, there's other monsters, you know. Speaking of Snidely, he approaches a prospector who found gold, played by maybe the oddest casting choice for a prospector who found gold, Eric Idle. You will be on network television. Network television? No way. Mm -hmm. To make things weirder, guess who handles a solid minute of exposition? Dudley, Nell, Snidely, Regis, Kathy Lee. Yeah, the last two. He found all this gold on land he doesn't own. The owner is staking no claim. Whoever finds the gold gets to The keep big gold rushes on for Canada. Is this still a Dudley Do-Right movie? I don't know why, but for some reason I laugh really hard at how randomly excited Idol is to see Bette Midler. Bette Midler is next. <laughs> so far the funniest parts of the movie are characters getting excited for things that they probably shouldn't get excited about. Not since the past two presidential elections have Americans said, you know, Canada's looking pretty nice, as people rush to Snidely's town to search for gold. His men return as well after they realize they've been tricked by him and he stole their cut of the gold. He gives them all jobs in his flourishing town, realizing that the people going after the gold are not usually Canadian. Canadians like to think things over before they do something. The Americans just jump. Like green lighting a Dudley Do Right picture, perfect example. Where's Dudley in all this, you may ask? He was fast asleep dreaming about horse. Well, that opens the stable door for a pretty easy joke, except the movie makes it for me. There's one perfect thing, and sugar, this one is it. So is this like Brokeback Mountain to him? <laughs> What's that? Well, I don't think we could do that even in a rated R movie. Snidely makes a fortune on the gold rush, which again is a little weird, according to before he was already rich. When Frazier delivers the only line in a way that actually kind of sounds like Dudley Do-Right. There's something going on in Semi-Happy Valley that I don't approve of. That sounded like Dudley to me. 
Again, it's not the goofy voice, but the attitude of naive authority was there. I don't know, maybe it sounds like that because it's the only line that doesn't involve vampires or tripping. On that note, this moment is so odd, it's pretty hard not to laugh at. You remember Nell Fenwick? Nell! Nell, will you stop that? Was there a running joke I missed? What a strange thing to say. He kisses her, yet he yells at Nell. Were there moments where she was making out with Adam Sandler's Dances with Wolves here too? Oh, it's just Snidely for Pete's sake. I also do legit love the subtlety that he's using a golf cart to play right. miniature golf. This movie's bad, but it does have its moments. Yes. Well, that is an amazing story you tell. Dudley goes to Ottawa to tell Snidely's nasty deeds, but it doesn't seem to go well. Millions of American dollars pouring into an otherwise impoverished section. He's the bad guy. Just look at the way he dresses, duh. Did the Italian dressed as a Native American honestly just say, look at how he dresses? It's obvious what he is. It falls on deaf ears as Nell's father, Inspector Fenwick, enters the picture, played by Robert Prosky. Again, in casting, that's honestly pretty dead on. Now give me your uniform and your sidearm and leave. My uniform, sir? Oh, I'm sorry, Dudley. Don't worry, you'll find something else. It'll take a very hot minute, but you'll have a unique box set. A documentary. Years ago, dinosaurs ruled the Earth. And they probably didn't look like this. I, I mean, they could have, but it, it, we don't know. Like, uh, okay, you ever see like a bear's skeleton? And, and then you're like, no, no, that's not a bear. Bears are like all big and round and stuff, but that's like what the skeleton looks like. Dinosaurs could have been the same, you know? They could have been like chubby dinosaurs. We don't know. And maybe they had shine. I mean, unlikely, but listen to me in this incredibly focused documentary. Good money habits start with your very first paycheck. And if you just scored your first job, well, you've got an opportunity to jumpstart a healthy financial journey. You. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Phil, everybody named Phil like their minds are gonna be blown. When you sign up for Chime and Link, a qualifying direct deposit, you get access to benefits like getting paid up to two days early and free, 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 that's not a thing, fee free overdraft up to $200. Maybe the dinosaurs would still be here if they had Chime. And maybe they'd be pudgy too. Remember that sitcom where there was like a, a pudgy dinosaur and he had like a sitcom -y family and stuff? Maybe they were onto something. Maybe they did live in houses, but those houses are gone now because of Chime. Or, or a meteor, uh, you know, it could be Chime. No, it's, it's, you know, we all know. It could have been Chime. They should have gotten Chime. Because with Chime, there are no monthly fees, no minimum balance, and no deposit required to become a member. So sign up, you person who doesn't know much about dinosaurs or else you wouldn't be watching this. Sign up for a Chime checking account today to link your paycheck. It only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash nostalgia. That's Chime.com slash nostalgia. You know what? Dinosaurs probably didn't roar. You know any lizards that roar? I don't know any that roar. They, they probably said something like this. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank, NA or Stripe Bank, NA members, FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Fund the eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. See Chime.com slash spot This was the greatest documentary you ever saw. Bye-bye. What's that? You want extra features? You got it! In making this documentary, I did an unboxing thing with the bag. Because one of my favorite things about getting a box of awesome from Bespoke Post every month is how it sneaks up on you. Like you thought this documentary was over, but no, there's more. Here, th here's the more. You forget that it's coming, and then one day, boom! On your front door, the best box you'll open all month. Again, kinda looks like a bag, but, but it's a box, I guess. It's filled with carefully chosen gear from the past small brands around the world. Let's see what I got this month. It's a peak CPO jacket from Live a trade. A great company that builds products to withstand the rigors of day-to-day -day life. Doesn't it look great? Who asked you? I think it looks great. Cause let's face it, no matter what you have going on, Box of Awesome has you covered. From camping gear essentials, cookout must-haves, and drink game upgrades, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. Each box is valued at around $70, but you only pay a fraction of that price. Plus, with Box of Awesome, you're supporting small businesses. 90% of everything that comes in your Box of Awesome is from a small, up-and-coming brand. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. And here's another extra feature. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code Nostalgia at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com and enter the code Nostalgia to get 20% off your first monthly box. Okay, we're really ending now. Surprise! No, we're really ending. Doug plays Jedi Survivor every Friday on Twitch. We also have content five days a week. Hope to see you there. Deli tries to get used to his life as a normal citizen as Snidely tries to win over Nell and her father at his restaurant.
Again, little touches like this fancy drawing of him do get a laugh out of me. It's like the logo I had years ago, and it hasn't changed at all. Getting old sucks, don't do it. That's where they melt down the gold, so they can salt it at night. Dudley finds out Snidely is putting more gold in the mountains for them to find, which, right. for a guy known for tying people to railroad tracks, doesn't seem that bad. <laughs> Hell, I'd be more angry at Nell for turning faster on Dudley than the writers did. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to think this film should have been called Snidely Whiplash. <laughs> Wow, this dance sequence is almost good. It's like every time it starts to get impressive, they're like, wait, is a Bullwinkle cartoon really worth it? <laughs> Dudley doesn't win Nell over via dance off. You know, it just hit me. Did we even see them break up? As the prospector tries to get Dudley back on track because we paid for Eric Idle, might as well get the most out of him. Now I will throw some stones at you, and you will not flinch as they whiz past your head. I wonder where this is going. And yeah, can we just cut to the crotch shot? Oh! I wasn't even serious about that, though why shouldn't I be with a film that opens with a farting horse? <laughs> After he finishes his training, I will say, I didn't see this edit coming. Well, then I'm afraid we're gonna find out which is your better side. Jesus! Dudley Deathway should have been this film's title! but it turns out the saw was just paper mache. Just paper mache. And he gets the info he's looking for, playing now a much harder game. Okay, so I can't pretend this is clever writing, but something about seeing Dudley do right with a machine gun, hell, just saying that sentence out loud does get a smile on my face. The prospector reveals he has family to go home to, and that training Dudley gave him the courage to go home and face his past. I thought this guy was gonna have a two-minute cameo. When did he become the most complex character in the movie? I was lost like you. No one ever really believed in me, but you believe in me, and, and that gives me the strength to rejoin my loved ones. If I can find them. There are so many questions I have for this guy. Can the rest of the movie just be a Q&A with him? Dudley crashes in on Snidely and Nell as they try to figure out who's the bad boy she'd rather go for. I do give credit this movie's not even trying with the little story it had before, and it's more satirizing what they're supposed to be doing in stories like this rather than why. I do have to tip my hat, it is just going all out for the jokes. I guess you could say that makes me shallow, but unless you're Eric Idle, I think that's everybody's M.O. Also, again, I just couldn't predict this would be the next edit. He's a cunning adversary, Homer, but not cunning enough to- <laughs> Okay, this is a bad movie, but I am laughing much more than other bad movies I review on here. Also, am I crazy, or does he drop the F-bomb here? We'll see if the shoe fits. What shoe, Whip? That's what they said. Watch it, you can't say that on YouTube. Only R-rated movies and PG-13 movies and- Yes, even PG movies. God, things make no sense. Meanwhile, man, they really thought they were gonna go far milking these characters, didn't they? <laughs> were there even, like, tribes on the show? You can't even blame the 60s for this! Dudley puts himself in the show, which surprisingly doesn't make anything less uncomfortable, but it does win Nell over, which I thought he already did. I love you now, and I always have. You really do now? Kiss me, you bird Liberace in a diaper. Snidely launches an assault on Dudley, but they shoot their fireworks at them. Which looks about as good as they did earlier. <laughs> That's the last set of fireworks. The fireworks don't work, so I don't know why they wrote that in. And they drive everyone away. Not since their all-male revival of Little Women had the kumquats faced such a hostile reception. Yeah, that was seen in bad taste for them. <laughs> Dudley's horse returns to show him the way, and I do kind of give credit, they do call out their own bullshit. That's it, I'm finished. I thought Native North Americans could run all day. Oh yeah, like we're really Indians. Just because you say it doesn't make it right. Did I say the burning hat was the most impressive thing Fraser did in this? <laughs> that actually looks like a really difficult thing to pull off. I mean, I know like 90% of it's the horse, but I couldn't do that 10%. The Canadian Cavalry arrives! Oh yeah, I actually kind of forgot there's a Canadian Mountie in this. And if you told me two tanks blew up at the end of the Dudley Do-Right movie, I'd definitely say someone at least thought a little bit outside the box. Oh, and where'd the Cavalry come from? 
Well, it turns out the prospector's wife was just sworn in as the Prime Minister of Canada and sent them in for the rescue. That was lucky, wasn't it? <laughs> Boy, I'll say. Christ, I want to know this guy's story! Snidely is defeated and Dudley hooks up with Nell in their new home. But not with new jokes. <laughs> Did they just see that Sideshow Bob episode of Simpsons and say, well, we got our everything? And of course, we have to end on what this movie was really all about. Horseshit. Hilarious. And that was Dudley Do-Right. It is bad, but honestly, I thought it'd be worse. This movie has plenty about it that doesn't work, mainly in the joke department. A lot of the humor is either written well, but is delivered poorly, or is written poorly and delivered poorly. Every once in a while, though, there is a pretty good bit, and the energy and enthusiasm of the well-picked cast does come across. The main issue seems to be around Dudley himself, who's not only written in a boring way, but also acted in a boring way. But I don't know how much of that is Frazier's fault. We've seen him funny plenty of times. I think this was just a misreading of what the character was about and what's supposed to be funny about him. The creativity and randomness of other jokes from other characters is appreciated, though. I mean, like I said, I kind of think this should have been more of a Snidely Whiplash movie, honestly. <laughs> but that's not what it is. It's a Dudley Do-Right movie very clearly doing wrong. But for so many wrong moves, I do at least want to acknowledge there were more than a few moments legit done right. Take that for what it's worth. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. He was fast asleep dreaming about horse. It's Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Month, so for Cameos for Charity, we're doing the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. This is the world's leader in the search for a cure for cystic fibrosis and supports a broad range of research initiatives to tackle the disease from all angles. So if you want a cameo from me saying happy birthday, good luck, or whatever, click on the link in the description and be giving to a good cause. If you're like your face is ass and I hate you, well, consider giving to this charity anyway, because it's full of good people doing great work. Check them out and see what you can do to help out.